and we give God the praise, we give him the glory, and we give him the honor. This morning we want to direct your attention to the word of the Lord from the book of Philippians chapter 3, and we want to look at verse number 10, as the apostle Paul addresses the church of Philippi, and it reads, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. I want to talk this morning, I'm going to talk about the resurrection. The resurrection to have understanding men on the resurrection. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for all things. And we give you praise. We give you honor. We thank you for this glorious day on which we celebrate your resurrection. We thank you, Father, because without the shedding of blood, there was no remission of sin. And we ask you today, Lord God, to forgive us of all of our sins as we forgive those that have sinned against us. And we just ask you right now to bless all over those who are viewing, those who are listening, those who will listen. Father, we pray now that your will be done. Bless us, O oh God. I acknowledge you as God, the only true and living God, my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. The Apostle Paul here talks to the Philippian church and he talks about um, rejoicing in the Lord and then he gives a warning concerning beware of dogs, evil workers and he, he goes on to talk about this because the dogs were false teachers, and then you had evildoers, and you had um, the these who work the works of Satan, and sometimes the employees of Satan um, actually do not uh, own up to being a part of uh, Satan's uh, company. But what they do, they're influenced by uh, self-motivations, things like uh, power and positions. And so uh, the enemy uh, can use these things to manipulate them, to get them to go against what God has established and what God desires for his people. Uh, it could be me, it could be you. If, if I ever get it into my mind that I want something, uh, that 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 uh, that I count dear to me and valuable, uh, and if I can't get it by legitimate means, I will begin to plot and I will begin to scheme. Uh, even can lead to envy and jealousy, uh, to where that I'm just trying to get my agenda passed. I'm, I'm trying to uh, take control and, and and be in charge and I want this and I want that. These are windows and doors that the enemy will come in, uh, praise God. Because if you'll notice, the scripture says, and the devil entered Judas. Notice this, but, but Judas had an agenda, and we have to understand that this is why we have to watch and get, guard our minds and our hearts, because a lot of times we can be in pursuit of something that can take us away from God. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So uh, uh, these evil workers, many, many times these uh, dogs and the evil workers, they, they really believe they're doing the will of God, but there's their own bellies, as the Bible says, is the center of their attention. They're, they're not trying to do what God wants done as much as they're trying to do what they want. Yeah done. And we have to be careful about this because the enemy can lure us and manipulate us and get us to a place 
to where now we're not even conscious of God. We have people even uh, uh, in our era where they cry Christian, but yet they hate. They cry Christian, but yet they're doing mischief. They cry Christian, and I'm a believer, but 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 it's only uh, their believing and their walk with God is only when it's convenient. It's never when it's stormy. And we have to understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Remember, just because you're with Jesus does not mean it, it exempts us from storms. Uh, the Bible said the disciples were with Jesus and a storm rose. And you remember how he had to rise up out of his sleep and rebuke the wind and speak peace to the sea uh, in order to get the disciples calm. Notice this here. So we have to understand that you cannot just claim God. You just can't claim Christ. You got to live Christ. You got to be, amen, what he wants you to be. You just can't do it from the outside. You got to be in him in order to do it. And so when we look at this, a lot of people, as long they're walking with Christ, as long as the sun is shining and the winds are calm but when it starts blowing fierce you will see who's really committed and who's really yeah. dedicated and who really means what they say because anybody can be with you as long as things are agreeable as long as you don't ruffle any feathers or as long as you don't cross any boundaries that people will get along with you people will speak to you that, that you speak to notice this right here but, but can they really are you can you really speak to folks who don't speak to you so so here we see that when he talks about beware of dogs sometimes these people are driven they are driven because they believe that they're doing the will of God but what they are absent in their mind is that they are in the center and the forefront of everything they're doing notice that people will try to recruit people to church uh, and then when folks come to the church they recruited them to if they leave they want them to leave if it was about the church and not about them they wouldn't want the folks to leave because they got mad and left but notice it's all about us and so so many times these evil doers are not wearing t-shirts I support Satan and I live in hell notice this no they really believe what they believe but they are badly mistaken and so Paul says beware of dogs because many times you can take an actor or an actress and they can play a role praise God but when it comes down to uh, uh, my life they will uh, abandon ship but I want to call your attention also to the book of Kings where that uh, in the book of Kings where uh, the 450 prophets of Baal, they believed that Baal was really God. And the Bible said they cut themselves. These are not actors and actresses. These are people who really believe in what they believe in. They're just misguided. And this is why we cannot follow everybody. And this is why we cannot be tossed to and fro with every wind and doctrine. This is why we cannot be accepting everything that says, I believe in God. Because we have found, praise God, that there are people who say, I love God and hate you. There are people who say, I really believe in God, but they violate his word every day, constantly. And so we have to understand the danger that lurks without. And so Paul is warning them. And uh, he says, uh, praise God, he begins to talk about, uh, praise God, how that uh, his, his resume and, and who he was and anybody could brag about that their accomplishments and their achievements and their status. He said, I am the one. He says, uh, he said, I don't have any confidence in the flesh. If any man think that he hath wherefore he might trust in the flesh, he says, I more. And he goes on to talk about, I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. I was of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrew of Hebrews and is touching the law a Pharisees concerning zeal. I persecuted the church touching the righteousness which is in the law blameless but what things were gained to me those I counted lost for Christ uh, yet doubtless I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ 
Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dawn, that I may win Christ. He says, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Notice verse 10 where our subject uh, was drawn. He talks about that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. And what he is saying is, is this. The journey that the Christians are on uh, is a journey that is not complete. The destiny in which we will arrive will be that of the resurrection. This is why the Apostle Paul talks to the church in this manner. He is letting them know that no one has attained yet. And what he is saying is, I have not attained yet. You haven't attained yet because you're still breathing. What he is saying is, we will come to the place of attainment when we are resurrected. But there has to be a death in order for there to be a resurrection. And so therefore when you say stop judging other folk as though you have arrived because you haven't arrived yet because you still have a pulse. You're still breathing. You're still living. Notice this. You have not attained yet. This is why as long as we are alive on this side of glory we must repent every day. As long as we are on this side of glory we must press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. It's not a time to relax or to stop the press because we have not made it to the place of our destiny. Our destiny, praise God, is through the resurrection. Notice now, praise God, and so the, the apostle Paul said, I want to know him in the power of of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. By any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Praise God. And so, so many Christians uh, we get sidetracked because we, we have this thing to where we like to lean to our own understanding. And when we lean to our own understanding, what is happening is, uh, praise God, we begin to get into error because our ways are not his ways, God said. And he said, as high as the heavens are above the, the earth, so are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. So when we start leaning to our ways and start leaning to our thoughts, then we have a Abandon God. This is why he has given us the holy scriptures that we will walk by them. This is why he has given us the Holy Spirit. Praise God that the Holy Spirit will lead us and that we will follow the Spirit. Praise God and we will know that it is the Spirit we're following by the word that has been given. Hallelujah to God and so my beloved brothers I want to say to you that there is power in the resurrection and on this day we call Easter. On this day, praise God, this is where our risen Lord has risen from the dead. I want to share with you just for a few more minutes, uh, and I'm going to be done, but I want you to understand the power of the resurrection. So many Christians right now are afraid of dying. Hallelujah. But you got to understand it is only through the tunnel of death. Hallelujah. That we will arrive at the resurrection. It is only to, through the tunnel of death that we will go from mortal to immortality. It is only through the tunnel of death that leads to the resurrection where we will have power. Praise the name of God. Listen to me here. But so many Christians again when we lean to our own understanding. Praise God. We are trying to prolong our stay here on earth. But the apostle Paul who was caught up to the third heaven in Corinthians chapter 12. When he was caught up and he said I saw things that were unlawful for a man to utter. He said, I was caught up into the third heaven. Whether I was dead or alive, I can't tell you. But what I saw, I want to let everybody know that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, neither 
uh, has it entered into the hearts of men what God has for them that love him. And the apostle Paul went on to talk about his third heaven experience. Uh, and when he comes back to earth, notice now uh, his attitude uh, is different uh, because now of the experience. Uh, you got to understand my beloved brothers that Paul has went to the final place. Uh, Paul has went to the place of arrival uh, and notice when he comes back with his experience uh, of what he has seen with his own eyes and what he has experienced uh, notice Paul said if it was up to me uh, he said I would absent the body right now uh, he said I am betwixt and between he praised God he said I I want to leave and I want to stay and if I stay I want to stay only because on your behalf but if it was up to me I would absent the body because he goes on to say to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord they praise God he says in his word to the church he says praise God to die is gain and to live is Christ in other words when we're saved we cannot lose if we're living praise God is Christ and if we die it is gain but most Christians will only serve God uh, and give money and give time but they will not give their life Jesus gave his life uh, who am I talking to this morning you gotta understand that uh, to give the shirt off your back is nothing uh, but to lay down your life uh, praise God is the ultimate sacrifice uh, but what I want to share with you today uh, is that what Jesus did. Uh, what he did was uh, he died on Calvary. Uh, but what I want to explain to everybody, uh, when we look at the legitimacy of Christ, uh, one thing we have to take note of, uh, he was born, uh, praise God, he was born, uh, uh, he were miracles. Uh, yes, and not only that, uh, he was born, he worked miracles, uh, and he died. Uh, those three and the fourth one, uh, he was resurrected. Uh, but let me walk you through these steps. Uh, uh, notice when the Lord uh, raised Lazarus from the dead. Uh, Whenever he raised Lazarus and went to the grave site, uh, told him to roll away the stone. Uh, and when he they rolled away the stone, uh, the Bible said he cried with a loud voice uh, and said, Lazarus, come forth. Uh, and the dead man uh, got up with his feet bound, uh, got up with his grave clothes on, uh, and hopped to the entrance of uh, the tomb. Uh, Jesus said, loose the man and let him go. Uh, whenever they loosed him, uh, the Bible says that Lazarus uh, comes out of the grave. Uh, and uh, the Bible said they eat together. Uh, but watch this, the chief priest, uh, praise God, and the religious one said, uh, because of this miracle, uh, people are going to believe on Jesus. Uh, we got to kill Jesus and Lazarus. Uh, watch what they're saying, children. Uh, we got to kill Jesus and re-kill Lazarus. Uh, because if we don't, the people are going to believe. Uh, but wait a minute, Mr. Chief Priest. Uh, he also opened blinded eyes. Uh, wait a minute, Mr. Chief Priest. Uh, he caused lame to walk. Uh, wait a minute, Mr. Chief Priest. Uh, he turned water into wine. Uh, wait a minute, Mr. Chief Priest. Uh, he walked on water. Uh, why are your 
are so concerned about the resurrection more than the walking on water and more than turning water into wine. Why is it more believable? Hallelujah of the power of God and the resurrection than it is the turning water into wine. Let me tell you one thing. Praise God. Uh, had magicians uh, that not only when Moses and them laid their rods down, uh, praise God, and it turned into a serpent. Uh, praise God also, uh, uh, they laid uh, Pharaoh's magicians, uh, laid down rods, multiple rods, uh, and all the rods turned into serpents. Uh, in other words, there are people with gifts. Uh, Y'all ain't gonna hear me that can tell fortune tellers. I, I, I wish I had a witness. There are people with gifts. Uh, hallelujah to God. Uh, but one thing that separates the men from the boys uh, is the resurrection. Uh, you might can turn rods into serpents, uh, but you can't raise from the dead. Uh, because if they could, uh, Pharaoh would have brought his own son back. Uh, the resurrection separates uh, the halves from the half knots. Uh, that preaching video. Uh, and so then uh, it shows us uh, that the chief priest uh, and the religious leaders knew uh, that this is a game changer. Uh, the resurrection is a game changer. Uh, can I preach it here, y'all? Uh, I got to run, but listen to me. Uh, so now, uh, when we look at the gravity uh, of the resurrection, uh, through the belief of the Christian, it is more convincing that Jesus is legitimate by his resurrection. Somebody, somebody need to look at this carefully. What I want to tell you is Jesus was born as he was. Jesus did miracles. Yes, he did. Jesus died. Yes, he did. And he died. Praise God, a crucifixion death. But watch this, children. And I gotta run on home now. But I want you to watch this carefully. Jesus was born. Jesus did miracles. There's power in the witness 
of the resurrection. Huh? anymore. 
the Lord is faithful. He will hear you. Backsliders, return to God. Rededicate your life. You know, the Lord is listening for your cry right now. You don't have to be in a church house. If we had to be in a church house, the Lord would allow, allow us to be in this pandemic under these circumstances. But he's God. And he wants you to know, like he told the woman at the well, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him, not in a building, but in spirit and in truth. Yes, God. Father, today we come and we ask you, Lord, to save all over this world. Save, Lord. Let them know that though their sins be as scarlet, you'll wash them whiter than snow. Yes. Let them know, Lord God, whatever they've done, whatever, whatever they're doing, that you're able, Lord, yes, to God. heal, yes, God. to deliver, and to set free. Father, do it right now. Right now, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Father, we bless you today. Right now, God. And we thank you that you're still in charge and you're thank still on the throne. And we love you. We love you. Father, strengthen those that are weak. Right now, God. Lord, I pray that you cover the saints. Cover yes. the saints. Cover yes, the saints. God. As you did down in Egypt. Yes. Lord God, help us right now to apply the blood over our doorposts. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, for we know just by the resurrection that we're on the right side. Yes, God. No matter how much doubt is cast and how many gainsayers and doubters that put down Jesus, we know, we know who he is. He's Emmanuel. God with us. Father, we pray right now, Lord, that your will will be done. We ask you now to heal the sick. Father, we ask you right now, Lord, to cover and protect in the name of Jesus. And we shall be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. amen. God bless you today. We thank God for you tuning in with us. We love you with the love of the Lord and greater grace. We miss y'all, but we'll be together soon. And we know that the Lord has all things under control. And we want to say as we close, we get ready to go to our next service. I want to say that we want everyone to not only be a partaker, but be a partner. And we're asking you to please give to the ministry. We have a cash app, uh, dollar sign, greater grace at 977 that's the cash app dollar sign greater grace 977 also paypal and that is greater grace 977 at gmail.com we're asking you you know it's very easy for us to give and it's also much easier not to give. But you don't know how many lives you will be helping when you give to the ministry. Amen? You may not be able to give a lot, but give something. Amen? And Paul talked about sparingly and abundantly. We have to realize that if we was in church today, we would have spent gas money just traveling there. I want you to sow today in the kingdom of God. Everyone that's listening, everyone that's tuning in, 
Amen. I want you to sow. Praise God. You don't have to be a member to sow. We want you to give. If this word has helped you, this, this worship has helped you, this experience has helped you, then we want you to sow. It's a bad thing to eat a meal in a restaurant and walk out and not pay for it. It's a bad thing to walk into Walmart or any store and take an item and not pay for it. Paul said, if I have sown you spiritual things, I should reap your karma. Amen. And he constantly talks about us giving and supporting the house of the Lord. Old Testament and even the New Testament. Old Testament, bring ye all the tithes and offerings to the storehouse. If there may be meat in my house. The New Testament, Paul talks about the mountain. I'm saying to you today, we want you to sow. Remember, right now, pick your devices up and go and sow into the kingdom of God. Cash out, dollar sign, greater grace, 977. Dollar sign, greater grace, 977. Also, PayPal, greater grace, 977 at gmail.com. Gmail.com. Greater Grace 977 at gmail.com. Let us hear from you. Amen. Let us hear from you. So today, we love you with the love of God. Till next time, be blessed. Amen. And peace in the name of Jesus.